affect impulse and contact force in the sport of volleyball. So, the takeaway, Ethan? What we were measuring was the change of momentum, the force from contact after it's been contacted, and the Magnus effect. And Matt will talk about Magnus effect and the problems we encountered <laughs> later. So, we did um, six different contacts. So the soft bump is where the ball is falling down and then you hit it with both hands coming up like this. And then the set is using both hands and pushing it upwards. And then the float serve is where you toss the ball up and then as it hits the top of your hand like this, you just make soft contact with the ball. And then the spike is where is a like a harder kind of serve, but you're contacting like this and then you're trying to get top spin on the ball mostly. Flying a torque on the top of it. Mm -hmm. And then the pancake is pretty difficult to do. You pretty much allow the ball to hit the floor, but before it hits the floor, you your hands slide right your hand under it. under it first. And then the dig is um, what happens after the spike. So the spike is coming towards you, and you dig it like this. Yeah. And the point of doing like the soft bump between the dig was more so because like the soft bump is you more so like putting like I guess more like force into it and like trying to put it back up. While a dig is more so trying to keep your arms just kind of like mm -hmm. strong and almost absorbing some of the spike force from the ball. Um, so we used the high speed camera and a volleyball player and the volleyball. And we um, used 480 frames per second, but we later learned that we could have went at a slower frame yeah. and that would have allowed us to collect data a lot easier. <laughs> and then. Um, from the video analysis with the frames per second, we were able to use Logger Pro and then analyze the data and make graphs from that. Yeah. And then uh, this is our soft bump graph, which is of course all in the Y just because it's just easy straight up and down. And pretty much, we didn't get our context time so much from our graphs, but actually going back and looking back at our data. But I mean, as you can see, these are pretty much the contact times for the most part and seeing how it goes back up. and down and whatnot, and we just got the enter velocities just from taking slopes from incoming and outcoming to get the uh, impulse of the ball. And then these are just more graphs. For the dig, since it actually does go in the x and y direction, we had to do a little bit more fancy stuff. Float serve, we decided to find out the, like the, so when, you, when our person hit the ball, it wasn't completely in the x direction so we actually found out the angle of launch from it kind of mm -hmm. so you can look at a data table for that later if you really want to um a spike which was pretty cool pancake which kind of looks like a ball bouncing almost the set which i kind of liked a lot just because the person that i was recording for this did actually a great job of keeping the ball and going and keep like Constant height. Constant height. Thank you, Ethan. Constant velocity. Yeah. And then this is our massive data table, which we had a lot of fun making sample calculations for, but we won't go into. Too That's much. small. And we yeah. we got highlights. Oh, good. Okay, so these are pretty much our highlights, and of course, change in momentum is impulse. So pretty much, it's pretty constant from the soft bump to the set, but what I thought was really cool to look at because uh, we could look at the contact time, and the way we got contact time was pretty much going back, looking at our data, and actually seeing how long that the ball is actually, of course, in contact, like with the soft bump, which is just pretty much how long it's compressed for. The set was a little bit harder to do just because you kind of pull the ball back and then push it back up. But I mean, we were kind of expecting a way larger contact time, which was about 10 times as large as the other ones. And then, as you can see from this, this is pretty much the main data that we were looking for. The soft bump, except for this trial right here, I don't know what happened there. The force from contact was not that high, but if you go down to digs right here, it's about twice as high for the force from contact, and then the hit was a lot higher. It's like 700 newtons, and this one is hard to see, but I think it was like 1,200 1, newtons, which was actually pretty cool to see just because the contact time is so low, and the pancake and everything else was, of course, representative. All right, um, I learned Magnus effects kind of in a different way, and I 
saw this image about 20,000 times on the internet and I didn't really understand it until I found an explanation that I liked, which is the explanation I want to talk about. So I just thought about it as pretty much the ball up here is pushing air this way, which is almost slowing down the air on the top, while the ball is pushing air this way, which is speeding it up. And one of, uh, I'm probably going to say his name wrong, it's the Italian guy, Bernoulli. 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 Apparently, if a fluid is moving faster, so as in the fluid right here is moving faster, apparently the density becomes smaller. Well, if the fluid is moving slower, which is ha what is happening up here, it is becoming a, uh, more dense, which makes it more dense and less dense, which causes the ball to go down. Do you mean higher pressure and lower pressure? Yes. Okay. Sorry, pressure. And then this is pretty much causing the ball to go down, which is the lift force that's associated with Magnus effect. And then... <laughs> this took a really long time. Conclusions, yeah. Yeah. And that's it. That's really all the conclusion these guys get? Oh. I read a lot more conclusions, personally. Yeah. Yeah. We're all always right. open to questions. We were told to go fast. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. <laughs> One question? Zach, um, what did you find? Like, I know that you did graphs of uh, velocities and mm -hmm. different heights and stuff. Did you um, find any major, like, I don't know, maybe on certain hits there's more backspin, so there'd be more, or more topspin and backspin, so there'd be more of a Magnus effect, but did you find, like, um, any major uh, differences between those, between those types of hits and other? It's kind of weird in volleyball, just because, like, there are, so, when you're like playing, the over, like, the spike has more of a topspin. Yeah, I mean, the, the only two contacts that really had any spin of any kind would have been the dig and the spike. And a jump serve, but we didn't really look we at that. We did not analyze yeah, the jump serve, just the float serve. Okay. Just because the dig, just because a dig is almost, if you look at the video from it, it's kind of weird. So the spike will put top spin on it, and then the dig actually almost kind of reverses it. But what, like, I'm asking, was it like enough of a difference that you could tell? Like, it's really hard to tell. So like if you take the high speed camera and if you put it all the way back to try to look at a court and then you try to and you tell a person like, all right, I want you to hit two balls the exact same way, like the exact same amount pretty much. But this one I want you to put top spin on and this one I want you to just float. Yeah. It's like really hard to like ask a person to do that just because you almost hit a top spin like serve and a float serve in like two different spots, so it's kind of hard to analyze. So you, you didn't really find that much of a difference with mm -hmm. the match, like, just because you couldn't put really enough you know, backspin on it. Well, spin. volleyball is all about top spin, really. I mean, I guess you could do backspin on it, but if you're doing that, you probably just messed up. <laughs> backspin on a dig when you're getting it back to your own yeah. players, and you want more time. That's true. Yeah, so they would stay in there longer. I think, I, I also wonder now, like, thinking about yours versus ours, because the volleyball takes up more space, it's bigger. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, like, with that, does that have to do with increasing the Magnus force, too? I'm sure it does. Now. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Indie Lab, next semester. Indie Lab, yeah. second semester. Good work, guys. It's really hard to yeah.